what's the most useful complication in the world of watches? Most people would say a date. Now, what's the most intricate complication in the world? Probably a tourbillon, a minute repeater, or some sort of chiming mechanism, right? A moon phase is neither the most complex, nor is it the most practical complication, that is, unless you're a werewolf. Honestly speaking, a moon phase complication in 2023 is just as practical as it is to use a quill to write a novel. So technically, it does have some functionality, but logically, you don't need it. But we are watch lovers. We are not logical people. So what is it about a moon phase that makes it so attractive? Is it the fact that it's such an old school romantic complication? Or because people actually want to know how the sky will look at night? I guess it's down to the fact that it simply looks so damn beautiful. And these three new Ferrer watches are no exceptions. Ferrer is a British watch brand known for their bold and colourful take on classic watches. They've put their own twist on many watch types including divers, chronographs and GMTs. Finally, Ferrer has taken a stab at the moon phase complication with three colourful models, the Burbage, Haley and Eddington. Now I've spent almost two weeks with these three watches and have many thoughts on them. Before we begin, I wanted to clarify that I have not been sponsored by Ferrer. I have bought all three watches with my own money and I'm not trying to sell anything here unlike many other reviewers. This is a review based solely on my experience with these watches, so it's totally unbiased. Okay, so let's dive in and find out what I liked and disliked about these watches, whether they are worth the price and which one is my favorite model. First, the names. Every Ferrer watch is named after a notable British personality. For example, the Burbage is named after Margaret Burbage, a British-American observational astronomer and astrophysicist. Similarly, the Haley is named in honor of Edmund Haley, the famous English astronomer whom Haley's comet was named after, while the Eddington is named after Sir Arthur Eddington, an English astronomer, physicist and mathematician. All three models share the same cushion-style stainless steel case, which has a 38.5mm diameter with a 10.5mm thickness and a lug-to-lug width of 44mm. The watches have a standard lug width of 20mm. These watches are also water resistant up to 50 meters, so they probably be shouldn't taken for a swim, but should handle rain or splashes just fine. As you can see, these watches sit comfortably on my 6 inch wrist and should wear very well on most wrists. The case has a number of finishes ranging from a mirror polished bezel, brush sloping edges and a grain twist pattern flanking the case, which Ferrer says was inspired by the surface of the moon. The crown is the stainless steel with a bronze cap embossed with a Ferrer logo. All these subtle but impressive touches paired with the irregular case shape definitely distinguishes these watches from the crowd. I really like the fact that Ferrer are trying something different here rather than sticking to the standard round cases. The disadvantage of the polished bezel is that it can show scratches easily like my Eddington already has. Another aspect I'm not a fan of is the crown action. Getting it in the first and second positions is sometimes finicky. Also, the crown seems to have some weird elastic pulling effect when winding the watch. I have only seen this before in cheap watches and I'm not sure why Ferrer couldn't optimize this action better. However, this is just a nitpick and hasn't caused me any real problems. Now coming to the dials. All Ferrer watches are designed in England and assemble in Switzerland, letting them proudly display Swiss made on their watches. Each watch comes with a sapphire crystal with internal anti-reflective coating. All dials have a small date window cut out at the 6 o'clock position, which is my least favorite part of this dial. I love the date complication, but I find it too small on these dials and I would have preferred a different execution of this complication. But this is secondary compared to the main feature of the dial, the star of the show, or rather, the moon of the show. While each model features a large moon phase complication, the cutouts are all distinct. Each watch has a beautifully hand-painted moon cutout featuring a differently colored moon sitting against a unique backdrop. What's more is that each moon actually has subtle contours in the paint resembling craters. That's some really surprising attention to detail. The Burbage has a vibrant sunburst finished arctic blue dial with a pink moon. The contrast between the dial and the moon phase really grabs your attention. 
This model features applied baton style markers to tone it down a little. Despite that, this is definitely the most playful and vibrant of the three models. The Haley features a deep glossy blue dial with applied numerals and markers and has a yellow moon. This is definitely the most subtle dial of the three and I think many people will appreciate it for this fact. Lastly, the Eddington has this salmon colored dial with a blue cutout featuring the plain old white moon with applied Roman numerals and markers. Ferrer's take on the salmon dial results in this pinkish dial which has a vertical brushed finish. This dial mostly looks pretty subdued, ranging from a light to a slightly darker pink depending on the light and angle. I love the contrast between the pale dial and the blue moon cutout, and I think that this dial looks much better in person than it does on camera. And if you're interested, this is how you set up the moon phase. First, find a website showing the current moon phase or just go to Ferro's website. Now pull the crown out in the first position and gently rotate the crown anti-clockwise. Each click advances the moon forward. Repeat till you match the current day's moon phase. And done. By the way, I have specially posted this video today, the 5th of May, which is full moon day. So you can peek out of your window in the evening to see the moon in all its glory. And if you, like me, enjoy this totally unnecessary attention to detail, do hit that thumbs. The loom on these watches is pretty crazy. In this side-to-side -side comparison, you can see that these watches have heaps of loom. The loom is applied on the markers and hands, and best of all, each moon is colored with this loom. The result is the best looking loom I have ever seen. I was in awe at how good each watch looked. What's more is that the loom is really bright. Ferrer claims to use grade OLX1 Super Luminova. Now I don't know what that is, but it's amazing. These watches come equipped with a manually wound Celita SW288-1 movement. This Swiss made movement has a power reserve of 45 hours and features hours, minutes, sweeping seconds with the moon phase and date complication. It also has hacking seconds, which is nice. The movement is finished decently with a ferro embossed bridge and is visible through the exhibition case bag. Visually, I think it looks decent. Nothing that will disappoint you nor blow your mind. This is honestly one of the best parts of this watch and ferro watches in general. Ferro give you a wide variety of straps and bracelets to choose from and most of the colors complement the dials really well. You can choose classic color options like blue or brown or go crazy with some other left field options like avocado green. I went pretty conservative in my strap options with the pilot blue straps and the Milanese bracelet. Ferro also gets brownie points for the super intuitive website where it's really easy to see how the watch would look on every available strap. Now coming to the strap itself, it is pretty thick and really well made. It's super comfortable on my wrist and although it's nothing fancy like alligator leather, I really enjoy the feel of this strap. The pin buckle with the brush finishing and fairer logo look great and complete this overall package. And the real kicker is that swapping out the straps is really easy thanks to the quick release functionality. When it comes to the looks, I like the Milanese bracelet on the blue dials as I think it pairs well with those colors. While it doesn't look bad on the salmon dial either, I think that the blue strap definitely looks much better on that watch. The contrast between the pilot blue and the pink dial make it really compelling. I'm a fan of blue straps and I think they work very well on both the Burbage and the dark on dark combo with the Haley. All in all, I think that the leather strap works best with these moon phase watches and I would definitely go for one of them over a metal bracelet. Ferrer watches come with a 5 year movement warranty which is commendable considering many micro brands offer just 1 or 2 years. Now these watches aren't cheap, coming in at almost 1700 US dollars. Now some of you might be turned off by this price for a micro brand. but Ferro have been around for almost 10 years and are not such a small brand anymore. Moreover, these watches are really well made with great attention to detail. The hand painted moon cutouts look amazing, the loom is phenomenal and the straps are great. Being Swiss made definitely raises the costs and also lets Ferro slap a few hundred additional dollars on the price tag. But you're getting a pretty reliable movement with a 5 year warranty. While I don't think that these watches are affordable by any means, they certainly cannot be called overpriced either. 
Overall, I think they are fairly priced for everything they offer. And many people seem to agree with this since all three models are now sold out. But if you missed out on one, don't worry. They are not limited edition watches and should be available in stock in a few months. So watch out for that. Each model is beautiful in its own right. Honestly, there's not much to separate any variation and I would probably be just as happy with any of these models. The Burbage has the best contrast between the glacial blue dial and the pink moon. It's definitely the most casual and fun watch of the three. The sunburst finish also looks really nice. The Haley looks great with the classic deep blue dial, striking red tipped seconds hand and the yellow moon. The date cutout on this model is so dark that it blends with the dial and actually looks the best of the three. But if I had to pick one, just edging out the other two would be the Eddington with the unique salmon dial contrasted by the blue moon cutout. Paired with this blue pilot strap, this watch just spoke to me. I love how the dial can look anything from a very faint pink to a more vibrant shade depending on the angle of viewing. The Roman numerals paired with the markers also provide a nice visual effect. Also, salmon dials are currently hot, so it's no wonder that this model sold out first on Ferro's website. I'd like to know which is your favorite moon phase watch. Do you agree with my pick or do you like either of the two watches? Do let me know down in the comments. In closing, I honestly think that the moon phase is the most beautiful complication in watchmaking and Ferrer has done a great job with their first attempt. All three models look really good and the attention to detail is really impressive. While these watches are far from perfect, I feel that these are some of the best design timepieces under $2000 out there. If you're in the market for a playful moon phase watch, I would definitely recommend the new Ferrer watches whenever they come back in stock. Now I know this video has gone longer than expected but I really like these watches and couldn't stop rambling. If you like the video, please do hit the thumbs. I'm also currently reviewing the new Ferrer Lander 36mm and that video is coming out in a few days so consider subscribing. Thanks and see you soon.